All right, so this is the Zephyrus G15. It's their new one for 2021. And when I originally got the engineering samples in, in January, I had a sneaking suspicion that I would be replacing my existing personal laptop, the Razer Blade, with one of these because they just seemed so good on paper. And yeah, this is a purchased retail unit and it is on point. This is a half polycarbonate, half magnesium alloy device. So this top surface has this grid of dots and it's a very recognizable grid, right? When you look at this, you can tell it's either a G14 or G15 and it's a very simple muted design. It looks really nice. But as I mentioned a year ago when this stuff first came out, you can easily get grime and just stuff stuck in the holes. And I'm not even talking about like super dirty people that just smear mud on their devices. I'm talking about just simple everyday use. There's just stuff that can get inside here. I already have one of the holes clogged from, I don't even know what it is, but it's in there and I can't easily get it out. And the other thing is that this does not light up. So the G14 last year had an option where you can get like these LEDs that would shine through the matrix, but you can't get it on the G15. It's whatever. I don't really think it's a big deal, but if that's something that was important to you, the G15s don't have it, but this is a better machine and you'll see in a minute why. Uh, the other thing is that the prismatic reflection you can see on some of the metal elements is way more noticeable on the gray device than it is on the white device. So again, if that's something that's interesting to you, you can see it way more easily on the dark surface. Now the rest of the build is just, it's on point. It's so tanky, it's built well, but it's light. It's like two kilograms. This is, I think for a lot of people, a ideal, chassis for a laptop, like a good size, good weight, and packs a lot of power. Now, when you pop it open, it's got that lid thing that some of the ASUS devices do. So when you lift it open, you can see that, uh, I think they call it ergo lift. There's a whole bunch of names they use, but it tilts the keyboard up in this ever so slight angle, and you are presented with a great keyboard. This is a nice layout, easy to get used to, easy to type on, good for games, good for getting stuff done. Uh, there's one complaint I have, and it's just, a very small one. There's no print screen key. It's a key that I think very few people actually use anymore, but it's something that I use pretty regularly for work and it's not there. So if you depend on it, it ain't there, but otherwise no complaints about the keyboard. Now the actual lighting, the backlighting on this is a white backlight or like a grayish blue white backlighting. It's not like pure bright white. It's a little dim and it's one of the reasons why I prefer this device over the white keyboard because the white keyboard has it's got the same kind of backlighting, but because the keys themselves are so white, it's actually difficult to see the backlight against those super white keys. So it's just easier to actually see these keys in the dark with the backlight off because then there's a more contrast, like the black text against the bright white plastic. It's kind of weird. There's a fingerprint sensor up top on the power button and the trackpad. So this is a large trackpad, easy to use, great click mechanics, glass, you're gonna like them. Okay, on the left and right are speakers that look really cool, and they also sound better than your average gaming laptop as well. Now the screens have these black bezels on both of them, both the white model and the gray model, and I was a little concerned when I got the engineering samples in January. I was like, is the white one really gonna have this dark bezel? And even the retail models do. This is weird to me. Like, obviously they put a lot of time and effort designing these new devices, so it's a little bit strange that even on the white device, they've kept the black bezel. But the panel itself is excellent. It's 1440p, 165 hertz, fast response time. I think that this is an amazing panel for the stuff that I do. Obviously, everyone's different. I edit videos, so the higher resolution is nice, and the type of games that I play can really take advantage of the 1440p, but that's not everyone. I tend to play games that aren't super demanding, like I like to play competitive shooters. If you're someone who plays a lot of like, you know, open world, high demand, like Cyberpunk 2077, say you play that frequently, having the higher resolution screen can be a bit of a disadvantage. Like you are forced to run at, like if you want the best possible image quality, you're forced to run at 1440p and it just puts a more strain on your hardware. But I personally like it. It's just a personal preference. Now there is no webcam. And I think for a lot of people that can be a deal breaker, like the G14 didn't have it last year and some people were bothered by that. I like it. I like my devices not having webcams. And if I do uh, any kind of like video conferencing, which I do very frequently now, especially during the pandemic, I just like I've purchased an external and I use it or just use my phone. But if you're someone who's highly dependent on video conferencing, then you're gonna have to get an external for sure. Okay. Let's talk about performance because that is where the magic happens. 
The gray one I have here is the Best Buy configuration. It's $1799 and it's really powerful. 3070 with the 5900HS. These chips are awesome and they deliver excellent multi-core performance. Now in terms of the graphics, that is the biggest difference between the gray one I have here and the white one. This is running a 3070 and this is running a RTX 3080. Now, the thing you have to keep in mind is that both of these devices are, they're thin and they're light and they're meant to be very portable but powerful gaming laptops, but they don't pump a ton of wattage through either of these GPUs. It's not like, you know, 150 watts ripping right through this machine. The 3070 is appropriately specced and I think this is the best value of these devices, that 1799 version. But the moment you step up to a 3080 because, I mean, it is faster than a 3070, but it's not as impressive. It doesn't deliver as, it doesn't make use of the 3080 to its full potential because of the limitations of this chassis design. So my suggestion is unless you absolutely need the, I don't know, the CUDA cores or the, the benefits of the 3080, most people, like the vast majority of people will be happy on the 3070. The one other advantage that the white model has, well, if you like the white color, but the other advantage that the 3080 has is that you get more RAM. So this comes with 32 gigs of RAM. And the way that it's configured on the internals is that you can only upgrade one module of RAM. The other module is baked onto the motherboard. So on the 3070 equipped version, you can only get up to 24 gigs of RAM, like eight baked on, add another 16. Whereas the white version, you can get up to 32 gigs because you have 16 plus the 16 that you would stick into the slot. So if your workflow or games require, it's not, no games require 32 gigs of RAM, but if your workflow or whatever requires 32 gigs of RAM, you have to go with the more expensive 3080 configuration. In terms of the thermals, they're both running liquid metal, but I think it's only on the CPU. And the reason why I say this is because if you look at the temperatures, the CPU temperatures, like they both run the same CPU temps, they're good, but the GPU temperatures are a little bit warmer than I'd like to see, especially on the one with the RTX 3080. So fan noise is a topic that is a little bit more complex on this system. And maybe it's because I'm looking at it from the perspective of if this was mine, right? Like this is the device I'm gonna be using going forward. So I'm more critical when it comes to stuff like this. The fans on both of these devices can be very quiet if you put it on silent mode, but I feel like if you want realistic performance on these devices, you need to have the fans going pretty aggressively. And the settings that they have, like the balanced mode is way too conservative, like the fans don't come on enough and it just chokes the system a little bit. And the turbo mode is really loud. So I feel like there should be something in between or they should bump up the performance of balanced mode. But there is a manual options. You can tweak things to your heart's content. But overall, the thermal systems on both these devices is quite good. The battery down here is pretty big. It's a 90 watt hour and I'm getting a solid six and a half hours on it. On a 15 inch device of this weight and size, seeing a big battery like this is uncommon, and quite frankly, refreshing. Like I like to see it. It's important to me and I think it is to a lot of my viewers as well. Now the AC adapter is 200 watts. It's not a super chonky one, but you also have the ability to charge these things through USB-C. So if you have the capability, if you have a charger that can do it, power delivery, 100 watts, it'll fuel this thing up. It doesn't run at full speed if you're just using the USB-C charger, but you have the option to juice it up in a pinch. The port selection is pretty good. You get two USB-A, two USB-C. They don't support Thunderbolt 3, but the overall device is great. And I feel like there's very little to nitpick about it. If I had to, it's gonna be a few things. Number one, I don't like the position of the AC adapter plug-in spot. Like it's on the side and your cable kind of runs along the length of, or half the length of the device. And I much prefer if it was in the back, so it's out of the way or just toward the rear of the device. But this is kind of in the middle, which I don't love. The other thing is that the way that the device exhausts its heat, a lot of it comes right out of the kind of rear of the device towards the screen or towards the bottom of the screen. Now this isn't new, a lot of devices do this, but I've noticed that this gets really hot. Like if you run a thermal cam, you can see it. Now, I don't know if it's bad for the screen, like I feel like they've designed this thing with that exhaust in mind, so they've probably taken it into account, but it's still a little bit concerning. Uh, the other thing I don't like is their software. So I'm someone who's very picky about software. I like stuff clean, right? And their software is quite cluttered and requires multiple installation files. And there's also the black bezel around the display, which I mentioned earlier, but the overall device, it bangs, it bangs hard. I feel like this is likely going to be the laptop of the year. Like actually, I don't see a lot of competitors on the horizon that can compete with this in terms of the overall package and the price. 
I do think Lenovo's Legion products, they can possibly hit it when they come out, but this is really good. If you're interested in this thing, it gets my wholehearted recommendation, especially the $1,800 kind of Best Buy model. Uh, I think this is gonna be on Amazon as well in the near future, I'll link it below. But that wraps up this review. And yeah, if you have questions, hit them up below. I'll do my best to get to them. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.